Hi, Namaste. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our uh, World News on IBM TV. Uh, today we have a special guest, uh, Max Silingus, uh, Grandmaster of Chess. He's joining us from Australia. We have uh, Nicholas joining us from North Carolina. We have Kimberly joining us from uh, North Carolina, Raleigh, and uh, I am uh, your host from Delhi, India. Welcome to the show, and uh, let's start. So, Max, how are the things going in in your country during COVID? Uh, so, I'm in uh, Vietnam at the moment, okay. and things are quite stable here at the moment. There are not a lot of coronavirus cases, so I guess it's good. Yeah, so, so, so I, we, should, we should all go Vietnam, So, are you stuck in Vietnam or you uh, by choice are uh, in Vietnam right now? Uh, so, the reason I live in Vietnam is I uh, have a Vietnamese wife. Uh, so I'm just living with her and her family in uh, southwest Vietnam. And, uh, well, at least compared to case in Australia, it's been quite uh, fortuitous for me to be here at this moment. It's a beautiful country. And, uh, I mean, it's a, it's like an unexplored land in the world. And uh, beautiful people. And, uh, I mean, there is too not much of, uh, I mean, city life. But there is a very good countryside. Mm -hmm. mm. So explain to us a little bit about what you think has been um, the success um, story for Vietnam right now in, um, with what's going on with COVID. Why, why do you think they've been so successful with this? I think one reason is that Vietnam have had a sort of past experience with different uh, viruses like SARS. And because of that, they know how to handle these uh, pandemic cases. So they already have you know, the systems in place to stop the spread. And that's why I think there are, last I checked, less than 300 cases here in total, which is you know, a relatively low number compared to uh, you know, many other places in the world. <laughs> yeah, that, that's beautiful to hear that there's such a low inf um, infectious rate. I mean, I, I can't imagine even the death rate be even way, way much lower. Hong Kong only had four deaths. I hate saying only. Uh, any death is is horrible. But uh, and we've got our guest, uh, Mr. Sasha Star. Sasha Star, yes, right. He is. Actually know each other. This is a chess. Okay, yeah, yeah. In case, in case you don't know, Sasha, he's from uh, Canada. Well, actually, he's from, I think, Moscow. Then he moved to Canada. So now he's Canadian. But, way. but, but uh, if you speak Russian, that, that's good, too. And if you play chess, that's even better. And if you drink vodka, that's even better. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a typical Russian-Canadian. But because he's Canadian, you always have to say A to him. So, you know, so how's it going, uh, Mr. Sasha, A? And then they understand it's a Canadian thing. And Max, right. as you know, is from Australia, and they, they, you always have to say mate. So you always say, Max, how's it going, mate? And then they, <laughs> then they feel more comfortable, right? That's we have another point. board of advisor from Australia as well. Oh, yeah, Willie Hill. He, he's not on occasionally, yeah. um, maybe he was with us for a very, very long time yesterday, so I don't know if we'll see him today. Now, now Ankit over there knows 1.3 billion people out of New <laughs> Delhi. So the thing is, he's got 1.3 billion followers. He keeps letting us know that. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll bet you, I think uh, Max would know would be knowing a lot of Indians uh, if I compared with you. And he must be knowing Shah Rukh Khan and all the cricketers in India. Oh, oh, does he know Shah Rukh Khan? I don't think he knows Shah Rukh Khan. Max, do you know who Shah Rukh Khan is? Uh, I don't think I do, actually. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, Ann Kit, we're going to get a hold of this guy. Max, uh, what about Sachin Tendulkar? <laughs> Ann is mine. Do what? what about Sachin Tendulkar? Do you know Sachin Tendulkar? Max? Yes, of course. Yes. And does he know uh, Anad uh, out of um, India? Anad? Vishy Anad? Yeah, absolutely. There you go. Vishy Anad's famous, baby. Vishy Anad. Okay. <laughs> Vishy uh, is, is the grandmaster, Indian grandmaster. And, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, everybody knows Vishy. Right. But, no, but uh, Shadow Khan is the most famous actor in India. I did. I, I went on with the yeah, I, and, and the highest paid. He's worth like seven paid in the world. Oh, like a billionaire. The and, and the thing is, and I told him, I said, look, no one knows who he is outside of India. And it's true. So we invite our guest in and we just test them. Do they know him? Nah, I never heard of him. You know, but uh, since you are a chess player, Max, I'm going to give you a, a little uh, demographic. Um, there are 2,500 billionaires in the world, approximately. Chess grandmasters, 1,500. 
there are more billionaires in the world than there are chess grandmasters. So here's the thing. It's actually harder to become a chess grandmaster than it is a billionaire. So tell us, how did you become a chess grandmaster? How, how'd that happen? What'd you do? Uh, sure, Nick. Uh, so basically, it was a lot of uh, hard work for me. Uh, I know in the US, you have a lot of really great tournaments and really great players. It was a really great opportunity to work on chess. In Australia, there isn't quite the same opportunity, but I was able to create my own opportunities by going to the tournaments, getting the right help from you know, various chess players, including a grandmaster coach, Ian Rogers, for many years. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. And just sure. by constantly persisting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just by persisting and constantly just saying, I'm going to make this work, I'm going to become a grandmaster, whatever it takes, mm -hmm. that persistence and that discipline really helped me a lot to get there and you know, have the life I have now. Yeah, and you also won the Australian Chess Championship, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so you were Australian Chess Champion, right? Uh, yeah, I was a champion uh, back in 2018 to 19. How old were you when you won the Australian Chess Championship? Uh, at that time, I was 25, and when I first won it, I was, I think, 22 years of age. Right, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I've been telling people uh, in, in a former life, I actually played a lot of chess, uh, became a, a master. I was 2257 ELO. And uh, then I quit and went to law school. A lot of chess players back then had to do that because the future in chess was financially not really very clear. And law school was a lot easier. But So I actually played a lot years ago. And by 21, I was the Florida State champion, you know, two times in a row because you get really good when you're younger. And then the real problem is that as you head up the, the slopes, it becomes a little bit more challenging to play, in my, my opinion. So <laughs> so because that's the reason I think Kasparov, he goes, I retire. The only guy who did really well later on in years was Korchnoi. I mean, he, he kept playing and playing. I mean, the guy just went bloody quit. And Sasha Starr, the guy below me who runs Chess Stars, uh, around the yeah, world. I'd like to suggest something to yeah, you. It, it's been it's been proven, and uh, I've discussed it with several top grandmasters. There are only three people in the world, chess players, who actually became stronger players with age. Uh, I'm talking about over 50 and even over 60 and so on. And you know who they are? They are Korchnoi, you are absolutely Korchnoi, right. Yes. Number two is Smyslov. Smyslov, yeah. Who played, and when he was 62, he was playing Kasparov uh, for a right to challenge Kappa. Mm -hmm. And number three is Sasha Starr. <laughs> Sasha Starr, which is this Yeah, guy I became more. way stronger player than I ever was. I'm, I'm over the board, my rating would be probably around 22, 22, 50. But in Bleach, three minutes Bleach, I've crushed quite a lot of grandmasters and, and oh, still do good. so at uh, chess.com or some, some other site. Still he's, do. Actually he, enjoy it quite a bit. He's, he's, he's dangerous. That's what he's trying to say, say Max. He, he's actually dangerous. So you got to watch players mm -hmm. like that, you, you, you know, when you're, you're playing. So tell, tell us, what are you doing now? Now that you moved to uh, Vietnam, what, what, is your, what are you doing? What's the plan? So basically, I've been uh, helping people with their chess from quite a young age. Mm -hmm. You know, my coaching journey really started when I was nine years old and I realized that even though I was the best chess player in, you know, my small little area where our school was, that in order to win the school competitions against other schools, I need to help my teammates become better as well. Yeah. And actually it was really rewarding and fulfilling to see them become stronger and, you know, actually win the competition together with them. So that's how I went my journey into chess uh, coaching and training started and then i sort of realized that i want to really help as many people as possible improve their chess you know achieve their chess dreams of winning some tournament or title or becoming a chess master mm -hmm. and so what i'm doing now is i've actually adapted to the current situation with coronavirus and i'm launching different uh online things mm -hmm. so while i was doing some face-to-face -face coaching uh, some years ago. Now I do everything online and yeah. focus on, you know, different programs and courses that people can study and learn from at their own time, at their own pace, and to get help from me and my community. So I've created online. 
Yeah, but, but isn't, isn't that natural uh, that you can learn chess today online? In other words, you can actually coach people from Australia and coach people in the United States. Can't you do that online right now? Yeah, that's exactly right. And I've been doing that quite a bit, having many uh, international students over the years. And right. it's been a great opportunity to be able to help anyone from almost anywhere in the world with their chess. Right. So, so as you actually do one-on-one -on -one coaching, because I know a lot of chess grandmasters that go, this one-on-one -on -one coaching is way too hard, or they get so many students, they stop taking students. Okay. Are you still accepting students? Is, this, is that what you're doing right now? Well, I'm in a bit of a transition phase because mm -hmm. what I've found is recently, I think the demand for private coaching's actually decreased a bit mm -hmm. where people are realizing there are a lot of other ways that you can learn and improve at chess. So that's why I've, one reason I've moved towards some other systems, which are based on people actually learning in a mastermind group from sure. one another. Yeah. Where, you know, basically not just learning from my expertise and what I share of them, but also learning from the other people in the group and the answers to their questions. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like taking everyone's brains together, uh, almost feel like we're doing with this show in some ways. Right, right. Did, did, have you ever run into Will Stewart who runs iChess.net, uh, iChessNet? He, he's the largest producer of chess videos in the world, um, mm -hmm. iChess.net. I don't know if you ever ran into him, but what he does is he puts these chess videos together. In other words, grandmasters do videos, then he sells them all over the world and people learn through chess videos. Um, have you ever talked to Will? Uh, actually, I don't think I have talked to him. Uh, I'm familiar with chess, iChess.net. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I do think that videos are going to be the future when it comes to you know, chess improvement and chess yes. learning. And I particularly see the Indian sort of moving a lot towards the group coaching and video direction. And you know, I really can see that dominating the market in the next five years. Yeah, because you know, when I learned, I had to do it the old fashioned way. There was uh, Shavosky Informator, uh, and I don't know if you're even around, and the Batsford series out of Yugoslavia. So we actually had to sit, read the books, um, study the moves, and do it all by ourselves. But that was pre-computers. And when the computers first came out, we, we looked at them um, years ago. They were so bad. We were going, these things were absolutely horrible. You could easily beat them. They barely learn how to move. But now that has all changed. In other words, um, I'm not even, other than new in chess, I think Batsford's out of business. I'm not sure if Stravowski Informator is even around anymore, is it? Or do you know? The Informator series. Uh, yeah, the informants uh, are still around. Uh, you know, they kind of redesigned themselves and you know, mm -hmm. create some really nice Grandmaster articles. Uh, about what you said with books, actually, I you know, also read quite a lot of books. I think when I last counted, I, think I read like, over a thousand books cover to cover in my life and right. most chess books. I, I, got a whole huge, huge, I got a whole huge book library if you ever need one on chess. So <laughs> you know, even, even the nuns, but, um, and also the thing is I go, I, I saw today you were posting about D5, the Scandinavian, what do you think of it? <clears throat> but I wouldn't go into that too, in too detail. Um, I play the Grobs now online, uh, G4. And part of the reason why I think it's one of you guys in Australia kind of like promoted it. There was actually a book written on the Grobs. It eliminates theory altogether, but you do it in three minutes. Obviously you're not going to do a turn. You do yeah. it fast chess. If you win, it's like you stuck it to him. If you lost, what was the grub? What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> you know? But what do you find out? Unless they reach a certain level, unless they're a master level or better, most people under 2200 have no antivirus for the crop. I mean, yeah. they have no clue. They usually uh, grab the, they usually grab the night paw and they get the rear end into them, you know, because they have no idea there's a lot of theory behind it. But um I, I'm not sure if anybody else wants to, to I, obviously see, here's the problem as you move up and you start playing these uh, crazy systems, you find out that the higher level players actually have antivirus for things like the ground already developed and you eat it in a tournament and you don't like doing that. In other words, you can't, can't seem to win, but uh, very difficult. So um, what I've seen though, that has developed a lot is chess.com and the online chess and things that Sasha is developing. He has this, uh, chess stars. He has two grandmasters play each other, and you basically bet on the move. In other words, you basically win points if you can bet on the move, which I think is fascinating because it gives the players an opportunity to interact. So maybe Sasha can explain 
a little bit about uh, chest well, basically, the idea behind it, thanks, Nick. Uh, the idea behind it was uh, my frustration of uh, playing online chess. Let's say I'm 2200 player, okay? So I'm playing, uh, say, 24, 2500 players. They crush me easily, right? Okay, that's fine. They're better players. So, okay, so you want to get uh, your ego going. So you're going down to play 1800 player and then and, and you just think okay i'm gonna eat the guy and uh, do it nicely oh wait a moment he's crushing you you have no defenses against him and you're playing three four games oh the guy is using engine guess what so he will crush you with the help of engine so those better players 24 20 2500 they will crush you because they're better players now the lower rated players they will crush you simply because they're using engine so there is no place to hide uh, whatever you want to do you're crushed and you're crushed again so um regardless uh, what some sites are saying they have an anti-cheating mechanism or so on uh i happen not to believe all that it's uh, image it, image uh, statements but uh, they have uh, no validity whatsoever so um, then another uh, idea what happened in the last few years, it's immersion of extremely strong uh, chess programs. Finally, with the, um, uh, I don't know, have you read the book, The Game Changer? That's a fascinating book about this match between uh, Alpha Zero and uh, Stockfish. I enjoyed that book quite a lot. It's a really fantastic book. and. Um, I mean, the Alpha Zero will take, um, who is there, Carlson, Caruana, Nakamura, and uh, 55 others, will crush all of them simultaneously, and perhaps will give them a pawn, uh, the handicap. I'm pretty sure about that, too. So then what, what's in chess? Uh, the man, all this, look at this Grandmaster's tournament. They're playing these guys um, yesterday. <laughs> My God, what a horrible day. Um, the Iranian player, Fifirujia, he was crushed immensely. Actually, I think he crushed himself, but uh, you, you've seen the game probably, right? That, uh, he was absolutely <laughs> hopeless against Nakamura. Okay, that's expected. Nakamura is one of the top players, but look at the uh, Caruana and, uh, and uh, Carlson games. Uh, Caruana collapsed uh, absolutely. Again, Magnus is the top player in the world, but he collapsed. So I started to think about something where the engine will be absolutely helpless. In fact, engine in, com in comp competition, what I've uh, invented, the engine will be crushed because all based on different factors than ability to calculate variations. So it works like this, two grandmasters. Last Saturday we had uh, uh, Mikhail Marin from Romania in Alexander Donchenko from Germany. And we had interviews with both of them a, a day before the uh, show. So they played two game match, two games match, 25 minutes per game, uh, 15 seconds forced delay. Actually, uh, you know what is delay, but we invented forced delay. The difference between delay and forced delay is the delay is something there and you may not even use it. You may only wait not 15 seconds, two seconds, and you'll do your move. But it's not good enough for us because people need a little bit of time to make their bets. So 15, 15 seconds force delay means that even if you want to make your move, you can't. It has to be at least 15 seconds. After 15 seconds, you can move right away, but not before 15 seconds. So people see the game. There are commentaries. There is a stockfish first top three moves that it recommends. And based on that, you have to make two decisions. Number one, which move to make. And number two, how many crowns put on each move. You can put five, 25, and 100. So at the end of the game, whoever gets more, more crowns than anybody else, we, we have small cash prizes, so say 50, 30, 20 dollars, something like this. You know what? Uh, I, I want to tell you something interesting. Uh, yeah, we had a, quite a few occasions when grandmasters were winning these contests by guessing the moves, but we have a lot of contests when grandmasters did not win um, the contests. 
Uh, we had one contest about two years ago when a young 11 years boy with a rating of 1500, he won the contest ahead of a few grandmasters, including uh, maybe you know uh, uh, Maurice Ashley. Okay, so he was one. Uh, then uh, Maxim Dlugi was playing in one contest, and um, we had several, several more. Oh, Gadir Gusainov from Azerbaijan, maybe you know him. Uh, actually, I won one contest, uh, um, and Gadir Gusainov was in second. What happened was that there was one, one somewhat unlikely move. I was in second place, and uh, I decided to put five crowns on very. Um, very obscure move, which I didn't think that would be made, but I thought if I'm right and that move would be made, I will grab complete pools. There were about th three, three and a half thousand crowns in a pool. You know how the pool makes, okay, this guy put 100, another 100, so it's 200, another 125, 225, and it adds up. So it was three and a half um, thousand, and I put five crowns, and I was the only winner when that move was made. So I grabbed complete pool of 3,500 uh, crowns, and Gajir Gusenov couldn't catch me after that. There were about like four or five moves. Maybe if it would be longer, maybe he would still beat me. But but the, hopefully the game uh, was close to end, and it was ended, and I got my, my first prize. I, I mean, I paid uh, to myself, but still nice. nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I've got a question. Um, hey. You've, uh, Max, you have a wife, right? Now, I'm I'm involved with all of these chess players. And I love it. I, I've never really played chess much growing up. I'm an engineer, but, and I respect it and appreciate it because I think it develops amazing skills. Does she play? Does she, does she play? Uh, she uh, knows uh, how to play chess, like the rules, but she uh, doesn't really play currently. Okay. <laughs> All right, and, and who is to you, I mean, who has been like your greatest nemesis or challenge that you've had to play that you're just like, oh my gosh, you know, do you ever get that way? Uh, yeah, there are different players who have, you know, kind of pushed me to, you know, find sort of my inner strength and become the best I can be. I mean, with chess, I think it's not just a challenge against other players and trying to outsmart and outthink them. But it's also an individual challenge of, you know, overcoming your own, uh, I guess, weaknesses and, you know, any inner demons you might have and how to, uh, you know, bring out the very best in yourself as well. I, I think that's the, uh, the ultimate uh, challenge of a chess player to uh, show their absolute best and not let themselves get in the way of what they're capable of. Yeah, and, and the chess stars that um, uh, that Alexander Stars doing is quite interesting because one real problem, and we we actually showed it on IBM TV, and we plan on showing it again. One real problem of chess, and it's had this ever since I was doing it, is that it just really doesn't show very well on television. Frankly, hate to say it, it's boring. I mean, you, it goes on for a long time, and then somebody finally makes their move, and as an audience, you don't get to participate. And so the thing is, the TV audience tend to go no. So what happens is we actually have a singer from South Africa who gets on before. It's almost like uh, the NFL. I mean, it's kind of interesting. So we have uh, this famous singer from South Africa sing songs prior to the match. Then the match begins. But the difference is the audience gets to participate by way of betting on the moves uh, before the moves take place. So this way you bring the audience in because I just don't see any other way you're going to be able to increase the ratings of chess games now, Sa Sasha, Alexander Starr, since he's from Russia, as you know, it's religion over there. They have a huge federation, one million people. In India, it's pretty big right now because of uh, Anad when he was the world champion. So worldwide, there's a big audience. There's 600 to 800 million people. But capturing them and holding their attention, you need something that they can be involved in, and hence there's chess stars, which is what uh, Alexander Starr is doing and two grandmasters play each other. It's interesting format, but me as an audience, I can bet on the moves because you know, when you sit around and you look at a game, you're going, well, maybe you should do this. Maybe you should do that. And you're always, you're always second guessing the player, you know? And, oh, but that's a, and you can yeah. a wonderful opportunity instead of talking, oh, this guy should move here or so. Sure. Make your bet. Stop mm -hmm. talking right. about it. 
you're bad right. <laughs> and you find very very quickly whether he's right or not because on, on, on the screen you see all the standing of top eight players how many right. rounds they have you have your own standing you see immediately resolve whether you won or you lost or so on and so so it's a wealth of information first of all you see the game you listen mm -hmm. to commentators you uh, see the top three choices of the topic yeah. so there a point is that there is no cheating involved. I mean, it's not somebody is using computer and somebody got this funny moves and so on. Everybody, it's, it's on. You know, it's right. Um, yeah, and, and, for, and for, for me, for me, Sasha, I got to promote it. So here I can promote it. The Australian champion versus the Romanian champion. Nice. By the way, it was it was, nice. it was yeah. quite because I'm PT Barnum. You got to promote it. There is only one problem: a time difference. A time What's difference. The time because, difference. What do you mean? Well, we have we have contest at three o'clock. So three o'clock in Australia. He's in he's in Vietnam. He's in Vietnam. Where? Yeah. He's not in Australia. Yeah. So I don't know what what time is it in Vietnam? Coming later. What time, time is it in Vietnam right now? It is currently uh nine twenty eight p.m. where I am. Wow. Nine yeah. twenty eight. Well, it makes it easier. It makes yeah. it easier. It's, it's a little still... bit easier for you than India and Australia. So right. Yeah. Right. And then, uh, then Marin actually won it, which would, by the way, what you didn't have, Sasha, is us being able to bet who's just going to win. I know that's a simple yeah. bet. But thing is, I would put on, Dem, who is it, Demchenko, the young uh, German guy. He was, he it, was it, heavy favorite. He had to be. His ELO rating was he's over a, 100. He's a stronger more. player. He's, he's a younger player. Rated. He's a stronger player. He's I'll younger. be all in on the young German guy. And yeah. when I saw Marin win, I was going, are you kidding me? You know what, Max, maybe we can get you to join us in the VIP lounge and we can talk about who we're going to bet on yeah. and we can hear your input. But you know what I want to do? I, I'm not very good at betting on the moves. I'm more of one of those social girls. When I go to the Kentucky Derby, we're wearing our hats and talking about the, you know, the horses. And But, you know, what I want to do is bet on the guys betting. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> okay. I want to sit there and go, you know what? Max has probably got this one. He's feeling good today. <laughs> you know, I want to bet on Max making the right bets against these guys. That's what I want to do, right? I want to sit there and let you guys do all the work. And I just bet on you while you do all the work. Or, you know, Sasha is feeling great today, folks. He's had his cognac this morning. He has. Not yet. Dinner. Not yet. It's and, coming, and pretty, it's coming, but not yet. I know. Yeah. But I'm just saying, you know, I would rather bet on the people making the bets because I feel like that that would be more fun than trying to sit there and guess the next move. So, but it's it's a fun, interesting game. Maybe we can convince you to come and join us. Uh, yeah, when we sure. Yeah, it would be a great pleasure. It, yeah. makes, it makes chess a different, um, just a different way of looking at it.